بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات البحر وأكرمني من نور الفه اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين the third chapter in the section on prohibitions is Fiqtada Nahye Lil Fasad is about an issue that we had it also in the previous book, and that is whether prohibition implies invalidity. Thank you very much. So if something is prohibited and still you do it. Is it valid? It is true that you have done an act of disobedience because you didn't listen to the prohibition. But is also the act void and invalid? Or you can say the act is valid although he has committed a sin, for example. So, Lil fasad, whether prohibition implies invalidity or not. هذه المسألة من المسائل المهمة في علم الأصول. This problem is one of the important problems in the principles of jurisprudence, in the science of principles of jurisprudence. التي يترتب عليها استنباط مسائل فقهية كثيرة on which inference of many legal issues, many jurisprudential issues rely. So the position that you take here affects your position in many fiqh issues. When of course, as a mujtahid, if a mujtahid wants to make his ijtihad, this issue is one of the issues that can affect his ijtihad. We speak in two cases, in two areas. One is when nahi belongs to an act of ibadah an act of worship, a devotional act. Another is when nahi belongs to an act of transaction, mu'amala. Al-maqam al-abbal. So the first area, the first discussion is fil ibadat Acts of worship or as we said in the previous book, devotional acts. Then, inshallah, after two pages, al maqam al fil muamalat about transactions. So, fil ibadat. Qabla dirasat al mawdu nadhkuru umuran. Before we study this issue, we have to mention few points. So, these are few introductory points. Al awwal, the first. What do we mean by ibadah? Al maqsood min al ibadah fi anwan al bahth. What we mean by ibadah in the title of this discussion, we say fil ibadat, is something that without having intention of getting near to Allah, you are not able to perform it. Okay? If you do the action physically, but you don't have the intention of taking, you know, seeking nearness to God, the action is not valid. Al-maqsoodu min al-ibadata fi inwan al-bahth. What is meant by ibadah in the title of this discussion is ma la yasghutu amruha ala fard ta'alluqhi biha إلا إذا أتي بها على وجه قربي Something that its command would not drop 
if the command belongs to in this abada, okay? If it is commanded, that command would not drop, it still remains unless you do it with the knee of Korba. If you don't do it with the knee of Korba, it's not enough. For example, if you fast all day, do not eat, do not drink, you observe all the things that you have to observe, just you don't have the intention of Korba. Still, the command is there. If you say your prayer without intention of Korba, still it's there. It's not like washing your dress, which is not just, or washing your body, which is not just. That even without Korba, the, pro, uh, the command is implemented and drops. So, we mean by Ibadah, مَا لَا يَسْغُطُ أَمْرُهَا عَلَى فَرْضِ تَعَلُّقِهِ بِهَا Means, عَلَى فَرْضِ تَعَلُّقِ الْأَمْرِ بِهَا دَيْ الْإِبَادَةِ If you assume, on the assumption, that command has belonged to this Ibadah, that command would not drop, إِلَّا إِذَا أُتِيَ بِهَا Unless you bring this Ibadah, عَلَى وَجْهٍ قُرْبِي Means, with the intention of getting closer to Allah. No, 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 you don't need to say it. Uh, you mean to say the niyyah? No, no, you don't need to say it to utter that I do this Qurbat and Allah, but your intention. Why you do this? Motivation comes from seeking nearness to God. So all those wajibat which are tawassuli, you remember we said wajib is either a body or tabassu. Tabassuli means you just need to do it even if when a person is sleeping, when a machine does it, it's enough. If a machine can wash your dress you know, properly, that's enough. You don't need to wash it yourself. Yeah? But for ibadat, you have to do it yourself and you should have the niyyah of orba. فَخَرَجَتَ التَّوَسُّلِيَّاتِ مِنَ التَّعْرِيفِ Why? لَأَنَّهَا How is a pronoun? Refers to what? تَوَسُّلِيَّاتِ Because تَوَسُّلِيَّاتِ are أُمُورٌ are things that يَسْقُطُ أَمْرُهَا Their command drops even if you don't bring it كَذَلِكْ عَلَى وَجْهٍ قُرْبِي even if you don't bring it with the knee of Gurba, still the command drops. Okay? Means you have no further duty. It's not that still it's asking you to do something. If you wash your dress without knee of Gurba, okay, you don't have the command of wash your dress. But if you fast without Qurba. The command is still there. So if there is time, you have to do it. If there is no time, you have to do Ghaza. Say your prayer. If you don't do it with Niyya, even if you do tens of Rak'ah without Niyya, the command is still there. You have to do your Salat. And if the time is over, you have to do Ghaza. The command has not dropped. Means still is effective and still is obligatory and binding yes if one ought to do all your action that's very good. washing the clothes or doing your work would, would that be then you get reward for them yeah yes you can make all your actions with the qurba then, then everything becomes a bother <laughs> but the thing is that for those things which were tawassuliyat this was not a condition. So even if you don't have Urba, then still it's valid. The second introductory point. We said we mentioned few introductory points. Yes? The second. قَدْ عَرَفْتَ أَنَّ الْمُرَادَ مِنَ الصِّحَّةِ فِي الْعِبَادَاتِ هُوَ كَوْنُ الْمَأْتِيَّ بِهِ مُطَابِقًا لِلْمَأْمُورَ بِهِ when we say 
an ibadah is valid. What do you mean by validity? You mean that it has been performed according to the command. And the result is that the command is no longer a binding. So you don't need to repeat or to do qadha. Because you have implemented the command. So, al-murad min as-sihha fil ibadat. What is meant by sihha, validity, in acts of worship is is that what has been brought, what has been done, what has been performed, corresponds to what has been commanded. So what you did and what you were asked to do match. Yes. You, what you are commanded is ma'murabe. What you have done is ma'tiyabe. So if ma'tiyabe and ma'murabe match then it's valid. And therefore, you don't need to repeat. Or you can define it in this way. So there are two definitions here. One is to say, The second definition is to say, is When something is valid, it means that you don't need to repeat if there is time, and you don't need to do qadha if time is over. So validity means basically the command has been obeyed and taken into consideration. Athalis, the third uh, introductory point. Prohibition has different types. According to one definition, it can be tahrimi and it can be tanzihi. This is one definition. Another definition, uh, sorry, division. According to one division or classification, salam. According to one classification is either tahrimi or tanzihi. Tahrimi comes from hurma, it's haram. Tanzihi means disliked, it's karaha, it's not hurma. You should bet, it's better you keep away from it, but even if you do it, Okay, so tahrim and tanzi. This is one classification. Another classification is Mulavi wa irshadi. Either the prohibition is said as a master to whom you have, you know, responsibility of obedience. He has the power of being obeyed. Ershadi is like advice. When a doctor tells you what to eat, what not to eat, this is Ershad, it's advice. Sometimes, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sometimes maybe, for example, the Prophet says something as Ershad. For example, says, don't eat this food. But if you eat, you are not going to be punished for it. You have just lost a maslaha, an interest. Okay, so there are two classifications. One is to divide prohibition into hurma and karaha. Okay, the other is to divide it to Molavi and Ershadi. Now let's discuss all of them. First, if there is a tahrimi al Molavi. It's prohibition, and it is also mentioned as a requirement that master wants from his servant. So, Ayatollah Subhani says, if such prohibition, which is categorical, which is decisive, belongs to Ibad, Nafs al to the action itself. The very act of worship or devotion has become prohibited. And the prohibition is hurma, not karaha. Fala shakka fiqtidahi lil fasad. There is no doubt that it would imply invalidity. 
For example, there is a hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prohibited fasting of few days. Two of them that we discuss about them here is fasting on the day of Eid al-Fitr and fasting on the day of Eid al-Abha. These two fastings are prohibited. The fasting is prohibited. So if someone does fast on the Eid al-Fitr or Eid al-Abha, the fasting is invalid. Yeah? You know what he said? Someone said, I have committed all the sins except two. I never fasted on the day of Eid al-Fitr. I never fasted on the Eid al-Azhar. <laughs> so this is, these are some sins that no one does. <laughs> بمعنى مطابقة المعتي به للمأمور به because as we just said in the second point we just said the first definition of سحة is what what has been brought and what has been commanded match السحة بمعنى مطابقة المعتي به للمأمور به what has been brought corresponds or matches what has been commanded? And when prohibition belongs to the same act of worship, then it cannot be also something to which command belongs. Such fasting, for example, on the day of Eid has no command. There is no ma'amur here. al-amr. How can we say that God has prohibited this and at the same time has commanded this? This has no command. So it's not true. It doesn't, you know, make sense to say that what has been brought corresponds to what has been commanded. Because there is no command. La Adam al Amr. Wabitali la yakunu muskitan lil aadate wal qaba. Therefore, because there is no command, we cannot say this fasting drops command for repeating or qaza. Because there is no command at all. Bi ibaratun ukra in siha. When an ibadah is sahih, walid. Either there must be a command or even there is no official formal command issued, you know that this is lovable, pleasing to master. It's lovable to master. And Validity is either because there is a command or because there is a criterion and that is mahbubiya, something which is lovable, something that is pleasing to Mawla. Both of them do not exist here. You don't have any command for fasting on the day of Eid al-Fitr or Azha and you cannot say because Mola loves fasting anyway, so this is lovable. No, it's not that Mola loves fasting anyway. You know. So why there is no command? In one way. Because it's possible to have both command and prohibition belonging to the same thing from the same aspect. Why there is no mahbubiyah? It's not loved. Because when something is prohibited, it shows that not only it is not loved, indeed it is disliked. God doesn't love this fasting. Indeed, God dislikes fasting on the day of Eid. Okay? Why do you think fasting on the day of Eid is prohibited? It's 
one fun quest that we have is to ask for a Maeda. Not any Eid. Just these two Eids, because on other Eids might be even Mustaha. Only these two Eids, Eid al Fat and Eid al Adha. Because the, the atmosphere is celebrating. So other eats also celebrate. Mm -hmm. Also other eats. Eid al Adir, for example. I think so. Eid. Uh, sorry, Eid al Fitr, because so many things are forbidden for 30 days, and this is like a permission, and same for Eid al Adha as well, because on Eid al Adha, most of the Hujais they are in Ihram and they take the Ihram of. That's why they're coming and uh, out, out from certain things. So that's why it's a kind of celebration. Yeah. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, but uh, there might be different reasons. One is that because both Eid al Fitr and Eid al Adha come after some struggle and going through lots of difficulties. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to make sure that his servants in this you know Eid don't you know undertake too much pressure on themselves. But it's a, it's reward and a kind of you know release because if it was mustahab they might have still you know done it. So he says don't do it. And maybe another also reason is that you should n never do things as a habit in the sense that you get used to do it. You know, for example, we fasted 30 days, let's carry on. No. Allah sometimes says you must do it, sometimes says you must not do it. You know, there are people, because they have been used to fasting, even when they are ill and fasting harms them, or when they are musafir, religiously musafir, and still they say, we want to fast. Why you want to fast? If you are going to please Allah, He says, don't fast. So it's very important not to do things as a habit. You do things as a taklif, as an obligation, just to please Allah. Sometimes he says you have to fast, sometimes you have to eat. Yeah? Sometimes he says you have to speak, sometimes you have to be silent. So you have to make sure that you are all the time ready and a standby. What the master says. Go or a stop. Do or not to do. Everything as master says. Because there is great chance that when you keep doing things many times, then you just get used to it and then your understanding and consciousness go down. Yeah? So you have to be careful. <coughs> as we said, there is no command and there is no mahbubiyah. The second type. At-tahrimi al-irshadi. It's prohibition. It's decisive. It doesn't say it's better. But as advice. You know, as I said, doctor says, you must not eat this food. He doesn't say it's better. If it says it's better, it's uh, tanzihi, it's karaha. He says you must not eat this food. But you know that if you don't listen, you are, have not committed a sin. You have just disobeyed a, a, an advisor. Of course, uh, if something is harmful for your health and doctor says don't do it and you do it you may have committed a sin not because of not listening to the doctor because islamically eating anything which harms your body is haram okay that's another case but suppose there is something that there is no religious ruling it's just a 
person who has given you advice. You go to engineer, he said, don't make your house like this. And you do it against what he advised you. So you have not committed a sin, but you have disobeyed him. Therefore, you have lost. Of course, again, if it's a matter of uh, wasting your money, then it can be Islamically also prohibited. But that's another issue. By not listening to an engineer, you have not committed a sin, although you have endangered your maslah, your interest. If the prohibition is expressed in this way, lesan means tongue, but it means it is expressed in this way, that you are warning the listener that he would not benefit from his ibadah. When we say don't do this ibadah, don't pray, for example, in such condition, it means that you are not going to benefit. It's not being useful for you. What's in the meaning of tanbih? Tanbih means to warn. To warn. 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 To warn. To alarm. Uh, Sometimes we use in Farsi for disciplining and punishing. They say tanbih shardan. But in Arabic means to warn. So maybe sometimes after warning and the other person not listening, punishment comes. <laughs> so then in Farsi said tanbih yadan for punishment. Okay? Eza varad bil lisan tanbih sami bi adam al intifa'i bil ibadah. If prohibition comes with this language, so it's expressed in this way that the listener is not benefiting from his worship as we have in the hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam saying Prophet told a lady that uh, in your period leave prayer don't say prayer they say this is Ershadi in what sense in the sense that this prayer is invalid. If you say your prayer, it's invalid. Not in the sense that she has committed also a sin on top of that. Okay? This is just something that you are not going to benefit from. So, according to what we have discussed so far, Allah means based on what we have discussed so far, the criteria for prohibition implying invalidity in acts of worship is one of the two. So, there are two ways. That prohibition can imply invalidity. One, one reason, one way that nay can imply invalidity is that nay is because of being disliked. It's not liked. Shara doesn't love this. Seha means that there must be a command. It must be mahboob. It must be lovable. These two cannot come together. Or the second way in which prohibition can imply invalidity is when prohibition is advice. And indicates that you are not benefiting from this. So it shows that it's not valid. In both these cases, the judgment is that Ibadah is invalid. 
Fasad, yes, means invalid. Even bottom, you know, yes. Opposite to Seha, validity and invalid. <coughs> the third, Anahyo Tanzihi. Problem happened. Okay, the third type is Anahyo Tanzihi. And that is, as we said, prohibition in the sense of karaha. It's not tahrim, it's tanzi. It's better to distance from this. For example, you are said, you are a neighbor to masjid. Don't say your prayer at home. It's prohibited to say your prayer at home when you are neighbor of masjid. What does it mean? Does it mean it's haram? No. It's karaha. It's makru for a neighbor. A neighbor can mean up to 40 houses, for example. Okay? If you are a neighbor, then it's makru to say your prayer at home. إِذَا تَعَلَّقَ النَّحْيُ تَنْزِيهِ بِالْعِبَادَةِ يَكُونُ إِرْشَادًا إِلَى قِلَّةِ الثَّوَابِ لَا فَسَادِهَا It means that the reward for you is reduced. Not that it's invalid if you say prayer at home. لا فساد نذير لا صلاة لجار المسجد إلا بالمسجد The neighbor of mosque has no prayer except inside the mosque. This law is law enough here, gents, but shows also nahya. You know law enough here, gents? La rajul Okay, all of these are about mu'amilat. Ibadat. Ahsan. All are about ibadat. Now we want to go to mu'amilat. Yes. Types of that you discuss in the Hadith and Nihi or the Mawlawi or the Hadith. What is the Mawlawi? How do we distinguish? Is this, for example, Tahrimi, Mawlawi, or Tahrimi, Mawlawi? Ershadi. The first assumption is that it is Mawlawi. Unless you have evidence that it is Ershadi. For example, the lady to stay away from prayer in the Ayyam. How do we know that this is Ershadi? According to those who are Ershadi, because they say it doesn't mean that it is haram to say prayer. They say it. it's not haram. It's just showing that there is no benefit. So if uh, any of the women keep the habit alive, if they carry on just saying it, is that okay then? According to some, like this book, it's just not beneficial, but it's not haram. She will not be punished for this. المقام الثاني في المعاملات. The second area of this discussion is about those wajibat and those actions which are not in need of qasd qurba, tawassul. So if something which doesn't need qasd qurba, a transaction, is prohibited. Then you do it. Still you do it. Is it valid or invalid? And here validity means what? For example, marriage is a mu'amila transaction. Talaq is a transaction in the sense that doesn't need qasd qurba. Buying, selling, renting, letting, muzaraba, muzara'a. If they are invalid, it means that the transaction is not complete. So, for example, you sold something, it doesn't then belong to the second person. It's still your money. And the money that he has given you doesn't belong to you. You have to give him back. When a transaction is invalid, so everything goes back to its owner. If marriage is invalid, it means that they remain 
if divorce is invalid, means they are still married. So fasad or invalidity in mu'amalat means that effect, that result for which they wanted to do this does not come, has not happened. Al-maqam al-thani fil mu'amalat. Yes. Like what? So they are all coming under this. Yeah. Yeah. Anything which is not with ni of qurwa comes here. إن المراد من المعاملات في عنوان البحث ما لا يعتبر فيه قصد القربة. Anything that doesn't need niya of seeking nearness to God falls under this discussion. كل عقود والإيقاعات. What is the difference between عقود and إيقاعات? Ah. عقود means like contract. It has two parties at least. إيقاع uh, it's a kind of, uh, you know, unilateral decision. Yeah? Athani. The second point. In al murada min as After you understood the meaning of mu'amilat, now what is the meaning of sihha? What is meant by validity in mu'amilat is that the effect, the result comes. Yeah? The result that you wanted comes. Ownership. When I sell you something, what do you expect from this? You want to own it. I sell you a car. You want to own the car. Okay? If it is not valid, it means you don't own the car. Still, it's my car. If it is sahih, it means you now own it. Yeah? Ownership is transferred. Zawjiya. They become husband and wife. Athalis, the third. Inna nahya anil mu'amala yadullu ala fasadiha. Prohibition after prohibition belongs to transaction indicates invalidity in two ways or in two uh, scenarios, in two uh, you know cases. Bela chalamen without any need for discussion. It's very obvious in two cases. First, إِذَا تَعَلَّقَ النَّاهِ بِالْعَثَرِ الْمُتَرَتِّبِ عَلَى الْمُسَبَّبِ When prohibition belongs to that effect which was supposed to follow. For example, prohibition has belonged to using the money that you have taken instead of the car. You sold the car. If you are said, this money is not halal for you. This shows the transaction was not valid. Like what? For example, if someone sells sharab, we say this money is haram. What does it mean? It means the transaction was invalid, so the ownership is not transferred. Kama ida ta'allaq al-nah bi-tasarruf fi-thamani awil muthman. You are said not to use thaman, means the price, or muthman, the one for which you paid the price. Okay? So, you sold sharab. Sharab is Muthman and the money is Thaman. Thaman means price. Muthman means for which price was paid. Yeah. If you know if you're selling an item which is halal for us, you don't let it pass. And 
we know the bias is a pillar of truth. Does that mean we cannot study the Quran when we know that bank because the money is around the problem? That's another issue. Is the money that he is giving you, is this money known to be haram or not? Yes, I know that his, his business is selling liquor. Maybe this money is coming from somewhere else. Is that the reason? Pardon? Is that the reason why he lost it? Yes. كما إذا قيل سمن الخمر صحت صحت means باطل means حرام the money that someone receives for selling خمر okay this is صحت this is حرام so it's obvious from hearing this you can realize that the transaction was not valid otherwise why this money is haram فَإِنَّ تَحْرِيمَ الثَّمَنِ لِلْبَائِعِ يُلَازِمُ فَسَادَ الْمُعَامِلَةِ the fact that it has been said that the seller is haram to take this money means that transaction was fasad was invalid وَإِنَّ الثَّمَنِ لَمْ يَخْرُجْ عَنْ مِلْكِ الْمُشْتَرِي this money is still under the ownership of the buyer yeah still the, is the money of the buyer so the buyer has not owned what is sold the seller does not own the money and the buyer does not own what was sold so it's invalid so if somebody buys also of course it's haram to do that so the money is still known to the money involved Money does not transfer to the other party. No. Father? So if you take the money and he goes and you go, money is still his. Yes. Money is his. Buying alcohol itself is haram. Not alcohol for uh, like medical alcohol or drinking wine, you know, like. Sharab, khamra. Sometimes in industry they buy alcohol for industry. That's possible. But if there is something, according normally to Fuqaha, say if there is something that the only considerable usage is haram, then you cannot take money for it. You know, there is something that the only considerable benefit is to use it for haram. But if it is something that can be used for haram and can be used for halal, then you can sell it and buy it. Okay? So we have to see whether the prohibition belongs to it, like gambling. Pardon? According to some marade, it's not uh, prohibit. It's not uh, permissible. So it doesn't. The money does not, you know, transfer to people. The second type. إذا كان النهي إرشادا إلى فساد المعاملة. When the prohibition is a kind of advice, indicates that معاملة is invalid. For example, Quran says ولا تنكحوا ما نكح آباؤكم من النساء. Do not marry those women that were married to your father father okay so if a woman was married and was divorced or the father passed away or uh, there was divorce then the children even for example uh, maybe for example they have not even uh, it's not children from the same mother, you know, 
there is there another mother they cannot marry that woman so what does this mean it means that this nikah is invalid not that nikah is valid and they have committed haram it's more than that nikah is invalid it doesn't become his wife father it's not a car it's, it's not a valid nikah the father marry the son and divorces his wife uh, if it is real son no but if it is adopted son like zaid that's another issue وهناك ثورة ثالثة لا تلازم الفساد. There is a third scenario, a third option that would not require invalidity. Like what? The muamala by itself is not a problem. But for example, there is a timing which was bad. Okay, a timing. Like for example, when you are muhrim in Hajj, you are muhrim. When you are muhrim, you should not do marriage, you know, formula. Aqdun nikah. You should not basically get married when you are muhrim. But it's not that the marriage itself is a problem. You could have married this lady another time. The problem is the timing, the condition, in the condition of ihram, in those few days of ihram, you should not have done this. What is disliked is doing this nikah in this condition of ihram. It's not that nikah is mab'ghuz. Nikah is disliked. So what seems to be the position here is that nikah is not invalid. Because nikah is not ibadah that you say when it is prohibited is invalid. So if this person has married someone during ihram has committed a sin, but they are husband and wife. Okay? It seems this is the case. Yeah. So as a result, it's understood that prohibition require or indicate invalidity in two cases first when the very act of transaction is prohibited Shara doesn't like this transaction okay second when the prohibition shows that the muamala is invalid the first is like transaction of sharab with money that the very transaction is disliked the second which is ershad like marrying someone's wife or someone's father's wife marrying someone's father's wife then ayatollah subhani has a discussion that we don't need to i think discuss it and that is to clarify what is the difference between this issue and the issue of Ijtema'ul Amr wa I think it's very obvious. There you had Amr and Nah. Here you have Nah and maybe not Amr at all. There is no Amr here. You know, when we say charging money for selling, you know, Sharab is haram. There is no Amr for selling Sharab. Or, for example, you know, married, marrying your father's wife is not halal. It does, there is no amr here. This is not the issue of amr and nah. In some cases, like ibadat, there can be amr, but even there we said sometimes there is no amr. Yeah? Like fasting 
Okay, it is true that fasting is about that, but fasting on the day of Eid, we said it has no Amr at all. So we don't need to discuss this. Then there are few examples. Few examples from fiqh. Because we said at the beginning, there are many issues in fiqh that faqih, by taking a position here, would make relevant or corresponding position in those issues. So Ayatollah Subhani gives few examples. I mentioned maybe two of them because it's easy, you can read. For example, we have in hadith from Ahlul Bayt salam that men should not put on gold, golden dress, and they should not say prayer in golden dress or cat, you know, having something as a gold. So now the question is, if someone says prayer like this, is it valid or invalid? So according to many ulama, it's invalid because nai has belonged to ibadah, salat. <coughs> Another case, when imam asked to give zakat, to give alms, so that imam distributes the person doesn't give to imam and distributes himself is it possible no they say it's not possible so then has he to repeat according to some yes he has to repeat because it was faucet he shouldn't have done this because zakat is in need of orba If someone that should make tayammum, because, for example, water is harmful for his health. It's very, very cold, and he is ill. If he makes wuzu with such cold water, it's harmful for him. He has to make tayammum. If he still makes wuzu, what happens? So some say his wuzu is invalid. Some say he's, because wuzu is about that. Because you remember we said wuzu is one of the muqaddamat, which is also a body, needs niya. And there are a few other cases that I don't think need, you know, to read in the class. You can read it yourself. So, alhamdulillah, we managed to finish the second section, which was about nawahi, prohibitions. And we go, inshallah, next session to the third section about mafahim. Implicit meanings. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillah rabbil alam.